Paul Gordon Dunn. Thank you very much, Deputy Speaker. I welcome this opportunity to make my maiden speech here this evening in the House. And first of all, I would like to thank the people of North Down for electing me the last Assembly election and giving me the great honour and privilege of serving them within the, the Northern Ireland Assembly. I intend to work on behalf of all the residents of North Down and face the many challenges ahead in my time within the Assembly. North Down has many great assets, none more than our spectacular coastline and Bangor Marina, which attracts thousands of visitors every year. The other great asset we have, which was mentioned earlier today, of course, is Rory McElroy. And as a representative coming from Hollywood area, and I've represented it for many years prior to coming here at council level, I, I as many of the people, are proud of his achievements. Uh, he's been born and bred in Hollywood, and we certainly would take this opportunity again to congratulate him, him and his family, on this great success on winning the US Open. He's a great ambassador. I think a great ambassador is a young person of 22 for North Down and for our area and, of course, for Northern Ireland. We look forward to his homecoming. I believe we uh, were organising an open-top bus, but maybe after tonight there will be an open-top boat that will bring, we'll bring him up the lock in, probably from Bangor up to Hollywood. But I think it is indeed significant this evening that I should make my first contribution to debate within this chamber on, on this local issue, retention of the Coast Guard and Marine Rescue Centre at Bergen's House in Bangor, which has recently come under threat from the government's statement on the modernisation of the Coast Guard services dated the 16th of December 2010. Much of this already has been said, Mr Speaker, but I appreciate that that is the nature of a lot of the business within this, this chamber. Brigant's House is a home to Northern Ireland's only Coast Guard station and therefore plays a crucial, a crucial role in coordinating emergency rescue and ensuring the welfare and safety of our coastline. I welcome this debate which has been brought to the House by my colleagues Peter Weir and William Humphrey, and I am well aware of the widespread support for the retention of our country's only full-time operational Coast Guard, not only in my own constituency in North Down, but the support there has been throughout the province. Despite rumours that the government is looking again at its original proposals, it is important that we exert whatever pressure we can to ensure this vital service is maintained. I am well aware of the ongoing campaign in support of the Coast Guard and I know that a lot of good work already has been undertaken by a vast number of organisations and individuals to try and reverse these controversial plans by the government. I recently visited Brigand's house and learned firsthand of some of the excellent work that they carry out. Immediately, I was very impressed with the skills and professionalism of the Coast Guard team there. One thing which was vital to the Coast Guard's level of service was the importance of having local people with local knowledge working on the front line to protect our coastline. The staff at Brigand's House are among the best qualified in the UK. Of the 23 full-time staff, over half of the Coast Guard team are SMC qualified, leaving them well ahead of their colleagues across the water and in the best possible position to protect our maritime coastline. The local knowledge of the coastline is essential when saving lives at sea. When a shift a swift response is so often the difference between life and death. When we think of the Coast Guard service, we often associate it with just boats and vessels. However, our Coast Guard station in Bangor extends much further than just responsibility for the Bangor coastline. They have a, responsibility for, a key responsibility for coordination emergency services in our inland waterways at Loch Ney and indeed in Loch Erne. The Coast Guard's remit also extends to commercial ports including Belfast, Londonderry, Warren Point and Larne. Another vital aspect of the Coast Guard is looking after the great number of recreational users in pleasure crafts and other types of vessels who use the many small harbours and marinas in Northern Ireland. In my own con North Down constituency, this is a very popular sector, with many boating and yacht clubs all of whom rely heavily upon the local Coast Guard service to ensure their safety at all times. Indeed, indeed during my recent visit to Brigand's house, one of the vessels berthed outside the marina was a large cruise ship, filled with hundreds of visitors, setting foot on Bangor 
and they understand travelling up to, to Belfast later. Can I ask the member to draw remarks to close, please? Right, thank you very much. Now, very much, they were under the coast, the, the watchful eye of the Coast Guard at all times. To conclude, Deputy Speaker, I think it's, it's vitally important that we unite together to uh, save the Coast Guard. A lot of good work has been done. That has been appreciated very much to date by the Coast Guard. And uh, I trust that this Assembly will unite in that effort. Thank you very much, Deputy.